I'm going to start this project with the legs. So R for rectangle from the origin, dragging in this direction. My smallest dimension is the first one, so 0 0.75, 11.25, which is the dimensions of a 1 by 12. P for push pull. Let's push it up 30 inches. Enter. I'm going to make a little detail on the bottom, and this really is up to you, but this is what I want. So T for tape measure, and let's just go 1, enter and let's just go another one two inches enter and then let's go 1.5 let's just go with one inch off the ground so now I can A for arc from here to here and then just make it tangent to this bottom edge and then really doesn't matter from somewhere right there up to here and I want to go tangent to that vertex so now I can spacebar click on this delete it Use a window to only select my line. M for move. Control brings up copy. And let's just drop one off over to here. Let's right click, flip it along the green direction. And T for tape measure. Let's drop another guideline real quick. One inch. Enter. Space bar. Select this again. M for move. And grab from here. Drop it off right there. Alpha line. And let's just connect the dots. Now I can select my guidelines and delete them. P for push pull and let's chop this off. It's just going to give a nice little accent to the bottom of the legs. Spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. So this is my leg. Let's M for move, control brings up copy, set one side by side, and then I need to move it again with a spacing of 11.25 inches, enter. And let's Q for rotate. Hold shift to constrain to the blue axis right here. Let's grab right there. And let's rotate another one, pressing control to bring up copy, rotate another one into place like so. Now I've got three legs. Need to add the fourth. So M for move, control brings up copy from here to here. So that's the shape of the can. Now I'm gonna bring up my paint bucket tool here. And this way I have all my windows real quick, but this way I have my materials and I can quickly I can quickly assign different colors to different parts. So I'm just going to start this one with uh, this color right here. And you'll see why in just a bit when I do my layout. So now I can work on the, the lid itself. So R for rectangle, and I'm going to make a lid support. P for push pull. Let's push this up 0.75 inches, enter. Now I want the lid to have about 3 sixteenths of an inch uh, overhang on all four sides to give it a little bit of ease of access taking it off and replacing the bag so let's pull this out three divided by one six enter spacebar triple click G for component enter let's just go ahead and give it a different color I don't know why that keeps moving let's give it a different color real quick M for move control brings up copy and let's go ahead and copy one constraining to the red axis along this back edge and now we need to do the same with some interconnecting pieces. So let's Q for rotate. And control brings up copy. So I'm going to grab one more right here and copy it into place like so. Now I made a 3 16 overhang in this direction. Now I need to make a 3 16 overhang in this direction. My length is already the same. So all I need to do is select both these pieces M for move and move them right there. So now I have a 3 16 uh, overhang in both the corresponding directions here. Select this one only. M for move. Control brings up copy from here to here. And now I can start working on the side pieces. So let's go with R for rectangle from here to here. And P for push pull to give this a thickness of the part of 0.75 inches. Enter. And I want to have an overhang of, uh, let's just go with two inches, enter. So the can lid is going to overhang the can itself by two inches. T for tape measure, and I want the total height of this part to be five inches, enter. P for push pull from this face right here to this line. So that gives me my proper height. And T for tape measure once again, I want to go up three inches, enter, and start my cut. And I want to come over from here, two inches, enter, 
and start my cut alpha line from this intersection to this intersection P for push pull and let's chop it off spacebar delete my guidelines real quick triple click G for component enter let's pick another color for this piece why in the world does that keep doing that let's pick another color for this piece and that's enough contrast that'll be fine and for move control brings up copy and we'll grab from here holding shift to constrain to the red axis I'm going to drop it off at this edge over here let's make this front piece real quick R for rectangle from here to here P for push pull let's pull, pull this out 0.75 inches for the thickness enter and I want a corresponding uh, angle on this top face right here so T for tape measure and I'll just make a guideline real quick L for line from here to this intersection P for push pull push this all the way back got a nice little angled top face delete my guidelines spacebar triple click G for component enter let's give this some color maybe this wants to stay over here and we'll give this blue that's fine let's go around to the back and make the back piece R for rectangle from this upper corner to this bottom corner P for push pull let's give it a thickness of 0.75 inches enter spacebar triple click G for component enter let's give it some color and purple that's fine make this top piece R for rectangle from here to here P for push pull let's go up 0.75 inches enter I want to overhang in this direction 0.5 inches enter overhang in this direction 0.5 inches enter let's spin around to the back overhang in this direction 0.5 inches enter space bar triple click G4 component actually you know what let me let me stop that just one second before I make this a component uh, this whatever this angle is right here I need to have two corresponding cuts so that my lid and this piece line up just perfectly so let me go ahead and P for push pull. Let's push this back to this face to make this a little easier to see. And let's use our protractor to go with a guideline that is 90 degrees from this face. And then let's just drop a guideline that is 90 degrees from this face. So if I measure this real quick, my measurements in the bottom corner said that, that is, that's 12 degrees. So let's go ahead and drop one right in the middle at 6 degrees. Enter. Now I can delete my original too. And now, because I did not make this a component, I'm going to select this line, M for move, and I'm going to constrain it to the green edge so my thickness remains the same, but I want to push it all the way out to this edge. Now I got a 6 degree cut on here. Space bar, let's delete our guideline. I no longer need it. Triple click, G for component, enter. Now I can't use the rectangle tool because all of this is an angled face and you see what it does here. So alpha line, I'm just going to connect the dots here. Making my own little rectangle. P for push pull, let's give this a thickness of 0.75 inches enter. And just as we did here, let's grab this line and because this is an angled face if I go ahead and move it I can't constrain to this line that once was my thickness so let me press escape T for tape measure and let's drop a guideline here as you can see it goes off into space M for move we already have that line selected and now I can constrain to that line see it says online and I hold shift so now no matter what I'm constrained to this line so let's drop it off right where it needs to be space bar delete my guideline and I forgot to overhang that so let's just go ahead and do my overhang P for push pull let's go 0.5 inches enter 0.5 inches enter spin around go over here 0.5 inches enter space bar triple click G for component enter I'm just gonna drop some color on this really quick just a different color and let's go back into this part space bar double click oops P for push pull, let's push pull this out that same 5, 0.5 inch overhang that I forgot to do earlier. And let's throw some color on that as well. Oh, let's go all the way up here and do that. So now I have all of my pieces in the correct spot. This is the trash can. Every piece is color coded and its action will look something like, whoops, look something like this. 
so that's going to be a hinged lid and that's the trash can so now we're going to make a nice little cutting layout and that's where the color coding com comes in into play to me it's easier to look at a color and specifically just glance right at it and know exactly where it's at as opposed to top side piece you know if, if everything's labeled then you have to figure out where the top side piece goes but if it's color coded you just glance at it and instantly know so that's what I'm basically gonna do here and let's first make two scenes one the first scene is the overall which is where I'm at now and the second scene is going to be the layout so let's go back to the first scene and where's the first scene? There we go. So let's sec select it all. M for move. Control brings up copy. You can do this with layers too, but this is just fine the way, the way I'm doing it. And let's drop one off way back there in the distance. Go back in here where you cannot see the second copy. And let's right click and say update. Now let's zoom out. Go into the second copy. And let's right click on layout and say update so now layout is going to be right here and the overall is going to be way over there I don't like that slow transition so let's go to window model info animation and let's drop this down to 0 0.5 inches or 0 0.5 seconds now my transition is a lot faster alright so we're going to be working with this one basically disassembling it so uh, let's go to M for move and let's move this over to here let's grab this lay it flat basically I'm just going to move all of these individual pieces and lay them out nice and neat so I'll speed this up for you guys All right, so now I've got all of my pieces laid out in a nice, easy cutting diagram, and you instantly look at each one and know exactly where it goes. So I'm just going to make T for tape measure some guidelines here to let me know uh, what exactly is what around here. And let's offset this by 96 inches, enter. And this tells me that each each division inside of this dotted line is a is a 1 by 12 that is 96 inches long and I really don't have to make the kerf mark here because it's only about 1 8 of an inch and all of these kerf marks added up do not equal this massive amount of cutoff space here so I'm okay with that now on this particular uh, this particular scene let's take the axis off and let's make the camera parallel perspective with a top down view and let's right click and say update real quick and let's add some dimensions D for dimension if that is your shortcut if not press over here from here to here I only have to label one length on these yellow pieces and let's just go ahead and label the Uh, width here of, of my pieces so everything is known there's my lid and let's just drop the dimensions inside here normally I don't like dropping dimensions inside the pieces when you're doing a layout like this but it really doesn't matter and let's say my cut starts at two inches here my cut starts at three inches here everything else is pretty much pretty much known on these and let's 
Let's just keep adding these real quick. Alright, so some of these dimensions are a little crazy with the units here. So let's just go to Window, Model Info, and go to Units and change the precision. Uh, 1 16th of an inch, that's as far as, as pre that's as precise as I need to be with this. So that rounded that into a nice 16th of an inch measurement. And pretty much from here, oh, let me add my overall measurement. Pretty much from here, you can go ahead and print this out. I'm going to save my document real quick. Let's just go with trash can. And now I can, I'm actually going to change my style to here. And that's the way it's a white background. Let's update this. And if you're in Windows 7 or Windows 8, I'm in Windows 8, unfortunately, uh, they come with the snipping tool. If you press the Windows button on your keyboard and type in SNIP, it should pop up as the snipping tool. And this is how I get all of my images from SketchUp. I do not use the export 2D graphic. Uh, I, it's just so much easier for me to go ahead and use the snipping tool. And the reason being is I can position the stuff on the screen exactly where I want it and use the snipping tool to press the new button and a rectangular snip and specifically specify that I want this right here to be an image and here we go I'm in the snipping tool and what's cool about this is I can actually uh, if I really wanted to I can write on stuff and write make little notes um, right from the image I could even highlight stuff like, hey, this is an important measurement. But this is why I like the snipping tool. I'm not going to use these here, so let me go ahead and delete these. All right, this is what I want, so I'm going to go ahead and save this image. But basically, that's how I get images out of SketchUp. Uh, I don't use the default export command. So now we have a nice file here with the layout, with color coding uh, pieces to correspond to exactly what goes where.